Hi everyone, Jessica here, welcome back to my channel and this is my second video for Christmas in July. Uh, so in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of an alternative sort of Christmas design and colour palette. So maybe if you like something slightly, this has got a slightly more masculine vibe to it um, and the colour scheme is maybe a little bit grungier than what I'd normally do but I wanted to do kind of something that wasn't quite so traditional. Also in today's video, I'm going to be using a couple of my new tools as well, which you can see me using here. Uh, so for these, I'm creating two cards in today's video. Um, to begin with, the start of it is looks pretty normal, pretty traditional. So I'm using some Distress Oxide inks and uh, we've got Rustic Wilderness. And I want to say the other one was Festive Berries, I'm pretty sure. Um, and now these aren't really two colours that you would mix together because they will muddy in the middle. Um, but to be honest, I kind of wanted to get a little bit of that muddy colour. Um, it really kind of gets knocked back quite a bit by the time you look at what I'm doing here um, versus at the end of the video uh, when you see the finished cards. It does uh, look quite different and yeah I think that middle section I think works really nicely with that kind of again slightly grungier um, alternative look to this card. While I was doing this and sort of adding this rustic green colour, um, I really thought this looked like a watermelon and I thought this would be a really great uh, summary kind of card, leaving that white gap in between again because they're not necessarily colours that you would want to blend together because of the um, colour that it's going to create in the middle, but I thought um, it would make a really good watermelon um, themed card but uh, for the paper that I'm using this is the watercolor card stock so it's slightly thicker um, so it's taken a little bit more ink so you want to make sure that you have some really nice juicy ink pads um, the festive berries or the red color I'm pretty sure it was festive berries that I was using um, was really really nice and juicy the uh, rustic wilderness I went over um, just a little bit more just to um, get more ink on the page so what you really want is to have to be able to blend your colors together your oxides together you really want to have enough ink on your cardstock um, to have it meet in the middle and to blend nicely so you can see that I'm just literally going back and forth between both of these colors I wanted um sort of slightly more red so you can see I'm sort of bringing it down but then I will bring the green up into that center as well so yeah this is some watercolor card because I'm going to try and do something again a little bit different and add uh, some interest just into our background using some water I did just put some tape on the back of this so it would stay in place and I had some sticky uh, tape just on my finger you can see there um just so I didn't get any finger um impressions on the inking. So now this is going to create the background for the first card. So again, I'm just kind of experimenting here. So I've got some twine from my stash and I'm literally just off camera spritzing it with water. You could sort of dunk it in some water. These make, or this particular one is a really subtle background. Um, literally all I did, you can see, is I'm just laying that down on that background because the Distress Oxide is water reactive. Um, you can see that it is starting to lift some of that ink uh, up. It does obviously dirty the um, the twine itself. So at one point, I think I do go from green back to red and then I do transfer a little bit of that color uh, back up, but you don't really notice it, so that's not a problem. And then it does kind of dry back. I kind of go over this a couple of times. I re-wet my uh, twine as well uh, and just trying to add those lines I wanted it to be a little more noticeable than what it is but it does make a really subtle bit of interest for the background it's not kind of taking anything away in the end when you see the whole card together I think it does work uh, really really nicely and then also having that extra ink like I said for blending together that does kind of help then as well if you do want to get some sort of uh, water reactive effects on your background it's going to help uh, for that as well so you can see I've just taken a clean piece of the twine um, wet it again with my sprayer um, and I'm just going back in just to try and yeah get some of that uh, color lifted a little bit more very subtle but I do like uh, how this came out and you can see that middle section there as well um, I think it did it blended quite nicely and again like I said that top bit where it goes from that middle color up to the red color um, again it looks a little dirty but again you see it at the end uh, and I think it does look really nice so there you can see our background, just a really simple way of creating a little bit of texture on that background. Again, these are alternative cards, not your traditional cards. This in terms of the colors are very traditional, but past that, 
you know, not exactly your sort of traditional kind of uh, Christmas card. So I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm just going to talk about um, the tools that I'm using. Uh, so the mat here, this this isn't new. This is the mat that comes from the uh, Tim Holtz glass mat that I'm just using. Um, but you can see the uh, silicon um, sort of mold that I've got on the right hand side that's holding the ink pads. Uh, I will leave some links in the description box down below for these. Um, this worked really nicely as well. It really does stop the ink pads moving all over the place. I don't have to use two hands. I can actually just use my one hand with the dobber going into the ink. So that is definitely a must if you don't have one. Um, they were really inexpensive. I bought them on uh, AliExpress. They were nice and inexpensive, um, but they have made a big difference. And I've got a smaller one for the Distress uh, Ink Mini Cubes as well, which I'll probably show you in another video. Um, again, it works really nicely. And then also the dobbers that I'm using, I showed you right at the start when I started talking. Um, these are the domed uh, foam uh, dobbers that I purchased again from uh, AliExpress and again I was really surprised how uh, well I thought they worked um it, they didn't have too many kind of uh, harsh lines on them like you get with just the regular foams so if you don't want to use the brush um you want to use a uh, dobber still uh, again yeah I thought these worked really really well so again um hopefully I can find the link uh, to the ones that I purchased I think I had a pack of 10 but yeah they did work really really well I think I'm probably a little late to the party with a few of these uh, tools um cuz obviously companies have brought them out but uh, yeah I do think that they are um you know worth that little bit of investment so you can see here, um, I'm just taking actually what is a paper mania uh, embossing powder pot. I sprayed a little bit of water onto my mat and um, I'm just creating some rings literally onto this background. Um, I was only going to do a couple and then I ended up kind of covering that whole background. Um, and yeah, again, I thought it worked really nice. So you can see it here. Um, I've just sort of taken it off the mat and cleaned up a little bit. Um, and I thought it did work really nice as well. This one, because you've got uh, bigger areas where the color has uh come off it um yeah I just thought it sort of gave that little bit of, of difference a little bit of texture um again that little bit of grunginess if that's what you're kind of interested in uh, even just to create a different kind of style card as well you know this isn't traditional for me but I really enjoyed making these and I, I do love how uh, these ones come out and it will knock back a little bit as well um once this does dry so I'm going to leave that to one side obviously he use my heat tool there um to help it dry initially but I'm just going to leave it to one side I don't want it to kind of warp uh, too much so I'm going to do my sentiment so these are still available I got these a couple years ago now I want to say two years ago uh, but the, I did check the website and again I'll link them in the description box down below because I think they're so beautiful these are by Funky Fossil Designs and this is the A5 Festive Phrases stamp set um, there's a bunch of obviously Christmassy uh, sets in here uh, sentiments and that and they, you've got different sizes different kinds of fonts um, and some of them are just really cool looking um, I think which uh, and then so I picked this one because I thought this one just went really nicely again with the kind of card that I was trying to create really nice and big um I did I'm gonna trim these down but then I do trim them out differently uh but probably how I cut them out here with my trimmer is probably about three inches by maybe about two and three quarter inches. So a really fantastic size. I thought I was just gonna use them like this as kind of a tag, but um, when I sort of start bringing my card together, yeah, I decided to um, just fussy cut uh, around these. But some really lovely products from uh, Funky Fossil Design. So if you've never gone on their website before, have a look. They do loads with stencils, um, lots with stamp sets as well, different people designing them, and they just have some really, really great products. So I'm going to do a little bit of die cutting. Uh, so again, just to add another little focal point to the card um, with some simple um, foliage in the background. But again, talking about that sort of alternative um, color palette, uh, that alternative kind of Christmas card, I've gone for a brown here and actually my card base is going to be a slightly lighter shade of brown as well. So this uh, die for this came from um, a Stampin' Up set that I purchased. I think it was the Forever Ferns. I went for not my 
typical one um, that I usually pick out from that set. I went for a different one. And again, I thought these worked really nicely as kind of a um, Christmas-esque kind of uh, look to it. I'm going to add some berries onto it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, for, again, for an alternative card, I was really happy with how this one uh, turned out. I'm going to trim down, so you can see my card base there just to the side. I'm going to trim down my uh, background panel because I did it to the size of the card just so I had the option then to just trim off um, the very edges. So how I make my A2 card bases, you can create two from an A4 sheet of paper. You can literally just um, do it straight in half and then score in half again. That'll give you your card bases. To make things easier for myself, I do like to trim mine down a little bit just to make my mats and layers a little easier easier to work out I don't really have to think about it too much so I will cut an A4 sheet of paper um, down and again it will depend whether you want a top folding or a side folding uh, card but my finished card size is five and three quarters by four inches to make these side folding cards once I have um, trimmed these down uh, so I'll trim it at um, eight inches and then I'll score it at five and three quarter inches uh, to create the card base uh, so again that gives me a side folding uh, card there and again you'll get two from um, one sheet of a4 cardstock so my background panel I then trimmed it down to be five and a half inches by uh, three and three quarter inches and the good thing with this I've enjoyed using a colored card base is I don't have to add an additional mat and layer on there either so you can see I was kind of just working out where I wanted all of my bits and pieces to go and then that was the point where I decided that I wanted to uh, cut it down and I like it in the square you know it really depends what kind of card you got and probably the size of the card that you're creating as well if you're creating a bigger card having that bigger square sentiment uh, might work a little better but yeah I thought for this one uh, trimming it down just fussy cutting around it uh, would work a little better and then you do have that little holly sprig, which is just the outlines. And I decided just to do really simple um, one color in that with an alcohol marker, uh, just to color that little section in. And I'm going to pop this up onto um, a thicker foam square. Um, I think the one I used was the Chloe's Creative Cards foams, which are my thicker ones that I have, because um, I wanted to then add the foliage uh, behind my sentiment. I really wanted that sentiment to kind of pop. There's a few things going on. It's not the busiest card, but there are some things going on. And I wanted that sentiment to stand out quite nicely. And that was the other reason why I stamped this onto white with black ink, rather than adding any additional kind of color or stamping onto some colored cardstock. Um, I really wanted to have that sort stark white on there as well just to help the sentiment stand out so I've just um, added the foam to the back I've then in opposite corners added my foliage and then just popped some glue behind uh, those sections so basically it's all fixed down behind the sentiment the rest of it um, is sort of a float in quite nicely I do like that because it lifts from your card and just adds a little bit of um, again a little bit of dimension back there at where it is sort of lifted forward so um creating two cards um i'm finding more and more is just as easy as creating uh, one card um so these came together really uh, really easy i think probably the most time consuming bit was doing the ink blending to try and get those colors to mix together nicely that would be the the longest thing that um this process took me to do but I actually really love how these turned out and again doing something slightly different um it didn't take me any more time to create that slightly different background uh, with the water so to finish the card off I'm going to add some Nouveau drops in a uh, red color just to make it look like there was some berries on here so again bringing in that slight Christmas tradition bringing in the red from the little holly on the sentiment that I colored and then of course you've got the red uh, background there as well but I added quite a few of these onto each of the cards and yeah I love how kind of full um, these ones uh, looked so I really love how these cards turned out let me know what you think in the comment section down below just for a really nice 
uh, different alternative Christmas card. It's fun to uh, create something slightly different. Uh, in the next video, because I've got four videos, uh, one is, uh, two are already up. Um, I've got one video left and then I do have a project to share with you as well. Um, so we've done um, cute cards, batch making cards, and then an alternative card. So the next one you'll see will be next Saturday at five o'clock. So uh, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and you won't miss out on that one. The week after that is then going to be my bonus uh, Christmas folio planner, uh, which yeah, is just a bonus uh, Christmas project that I've created. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you like these cards as much as I do. Uh, so that's going to be it for today. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.